please welcome maybe the next president of the United States, Mr. Wayne Allen Root, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Wayne Allen Root. So I was on the plane on the way over here. This is a true story, and I'm sitting next to the guy on the plane, and we're talking, and I started telling him about my, what I call my positive addiction. So those of you who are in Chicago, let's have a show of hands. How many of you saw me in Chicago? Great, great. So you know about positive addictions. I like to talk about the fact that my foundation in life is my positive addictions, and I told this guy, you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, don't do caffeine, no coffee, no soda, no fast food. And the guy looks at me and he says, why? And I said, because I want to live to 100. And he looks at me and he says, but why would you want to? <laughs> Some people just don't get it. But I am high on life. And I think to be successful, you got to be high on life. And my goal is to teach all of you and everyone I come in contact with how to be high on life. Now, if you're going to take a few notes, take these notes right now. Write these down. Because uh, these are all topics I'm going to cover today. Number one, relentless. Number one, never, ever, ever give up or give in. That's number one. Number two, lemons to lemonade. It's like the story of my life. Lemons to lemonade. Talk about that today. Number three, chutzpah. You know what I pronounce that, but how can you write it? C-H-U-T-Z-P-A-H. It's a New York Yiddish phrase, chutzpah. Risk taker, you gotta be a gambler, you have to be. If you play it safe, you cannot be a business owner, you cannot be super successful in life. Passionate and enthusiastic, you have got to be. Enthusiastic like an evangelist. I am a capitalist evangelist. Clear eyes, full heart. Clear eyes, full heart, I'll explain that today. Positive addictions, and then I have exactly one in common with Gene Simmons, and that is dress British, think Yiddish. He mentioned that yesterday. And funny enough, that's part of my presentation today. Now, you know, first I want to talk a little bit about my politics before I get into success. Because every time I'm in California, I'm reminded of what not to do. And so, how many of you are from California? Show of hands. How many of you are from Texas? We have any Texans in here? All right. Hook them horns. So every time I get off the plane in California, I think of eBay, and when people ask me why, I say, because you had the head of eBay, Meg Whitman, running for governor of this state, and she was your last possible choice to save this state, which is so mired in debt and deficit and unsustainable pensions, it is bankrupt to the 100th degree, bankruptcy squared. She was your last shot, when people go, why? I say, because she was in charge of eBay, and the only way at this point to save California is put it for sale on eBay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Only chance. <laughs> yeah, would anybody buy it? Yeah, a penny on the dollar, maybe. Now, it's my favorite state because it's a perfect model teaching people what not to do. I always say that. But really, my favorite state is Texas. <laughs> now, Texas has zero state income tax, a pro-business attitude. They discourage class action lawsuits. And they, the Constitution of Texas, like my state, Nevada, literally bans politicians from meeting on a full-time basis. You could only meet once every two years. And that would explain why things work in Texas. When you ask me how to save America, we should ban Congress from meeting more than once every two years. So the results are, the census is out, and for the last 10 years, number one in population gain, number of people, Texas, more Fortune 500 headquarters than any other state in America, and for the first time ever, more than the state of New York. And how about this one? Half the jobs in America in the last year were created in the great state of Texas. Obviously, they know what they're doing. It's working. And how about this one? I'm born and raised in New York, and I love New York. I love visiting New York, and I love New Yorkers, but how about this one? New York has the highest tax in the nation. Texas among the lowest. Therefore, New York near the bottom of population gain. One million people left New York. I call it escape from New York with my life. And, and in the last 10 years, 
almost $1 trillion was transferred from New York in wealth to Texas. How about that one? So obviously, if Mr. Obama doesn't get it, there's the game plan for America. Emulate Texas. Now, I want to tell you a little story that explains the difference between Texas and California. And I think you'll like it. The governor of Texas, excuse me, the governor of California, is jogging along a nature trail with his beloved dog and his security detail. And a coyote jumps out, bites the governor of California, and starts attacking his dog. And so his bodyguard immediately pulls out his gun and, and starts to shoot the coyote. And the governor of California reflects upon his liberal activist base, PETA, Animal Rights, Sierra Club, ACLU, Bar Association, and immediately grabs the hand of his bodyguard and says, don't shoot. That coyote is only doing what comes natural in nature, and we can't hurt the coyote. We have no right to kill him. And so the coyote kills his beloved dog. So the governor is now injured. They call an ambulance. He has to go to the hospital. The bill's $3,500 to fix him up, test him for rabies. He has to call animal control. The animal control has to capture the coyote, test him for rabies. And then uh, at, at that point, they have to relocate it to its natural habitat where humans won't bother the coyote, and that's Montana. So they pay $10,000 for all that. The governor literally calls a vet to bury his dog, and that's $500. The governor goes to uh, literally the California Fish and Game Bureau and he says, we got to do something about this. We can't let this happen again. So they conduct a $100,000 survey to make sure the area is now free of dangerous animals. The governor spends $50,000 in state funds to implement a coyote awareness program for the residents. The state legislator spends $2 million to study how to eradicate rabies in wildlife in California. The governor's bodyguard is fired for trying to murder an innocent animal, and the state pays him a $1 million settlement to make him go away. The PETA and Sierra Club protest the coyote's relocation, sue the state for $5 million, and California settles the lawsuit by donating $2 million to PETA for animal sensitivity training among state employees. Now, how would Texas handle the same situation? The governor of Texas is jogging along his nature trail with his dog. No bodyguard, because in Texas they don't need one. The governor carries a gun. A coyote comes out to hurt him and the animal. He shoots the coyote dead. At this point, he has spent 50 cents on a hollow point bullet. Him and the dog continue their run. Buzzards come down and eat the dead coyote. End of story. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why California is broke and Texas is not.